all systems in our bodies are interconnected I completely interconnected so, so moving bones and muscles actually can affect immune system absolutely and feeling of pain which and this feeling is in our brain so all these systems are so interconnected we cannot find one target and target something by targeting one molecule we will target everything in the body Hi, I'm Haley Pomeroy. I am the Assistant Director of the Integrative Medicine Program at the Institute for Neuroimmune Medicine. I want to welcome you to our podcast, Hope and Help for Fatigue and Chronic Illness. Today, I have an incredible guest that is going to share with you some of the cutting edge science and research that's happening in genomics and regulation and processes in the living cell. Today, I have Dr. Nathanson. Dr. Nathanson, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, we are, I have a million questions for you. Genomics is <laughs> such a hot topic right now. It is something that um, we are looking at in um, sports medicine, that we're looking in performance enhancement, but definitely it is a cutting edge leg of research that we're seeing in chronic disease. And so can you tell me a little bit about how you got into this field of science? It just happened. <laughs> and basically. you're humble. I forgot to say, well, you're incredibly humble. Mm, no. <laughs> uh, many things in my life just happened. Probably it was destiny. So yes, genomics is uh, developing very quickly. But I would say uh, when we are talking, to be more precise, when we're talking about genomics, it means we're talking about sequence of our DNA. But there are other things that can influence our metabolism and our health or disease a lot. Uh, this is what we call epigenetics. And epigenetics, it is not sequence of our DNA. I mean, sequence of our DNA is something that we have in our cells. We cannot change it. So it's, it's stationary. Yes. And, and, that's, yes, it, and yes. then is that the science of genomics then? It is library of cookbooks. Ooh, okay. Library of I like cookbooks that. Uh, to cook everything that happens in our cells. But uh, let's say when you copy recipe from cookbook, and you are going to your kitchen to cook, you can change this recipe. Yes. So there are uh, epigenetics is exactly changing so is of it this recipe. Because we have some DNA sequence, because we have some mutations, it does not mean that we destined to have diseases. Got it. Uh, so is epigenetics like the turning on and off? Of it is turning on and okay. off. It is also making stronger or weaker. Okay. So if a person has, uh, oh, that was a big one for me. All of a sudden <laughs> okay, my brain uh, went. One second. Uh, yeah, just yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to be exact, there are few uh, diseases, single cell, uh, single gene, sorry, single gene disorders that, yeah, if there is mutation in some gene, it is disease. It is like sickle cell anemia okay. or cystic fibrosis. But it is very few diseases like this. Okay. Majority of our diseases, including chronic diseases, including myalgic encephalomyelitis and uh, many other diseases, uh, it is not just mutation in one gene. And many other diseases can be changed by our lifestyle, which is epigenetics. So so I, that that brings me to this question, which is totally thrown me for a little bit of a curveball, but I'm excited about it. So I always thought that there were a handful of genetic caused diseases, right? Like you mentioned, sickle cell anemia. But that the chronic diseases, like inflammatory response, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, even chronic diseases like maybe chronic diabetic patient, there is a genetic or an epigenetic component to that? There is a huge epigenetic component like <sighs> that. And let's say our nurses practitioners, they change epigenetics in their patients. So they do blood tests. Hold uh, on. Yes. I, I, that was profound. I'm sorry. Th this, I know this is what you study every day. You're a leading expert in this. I don't, you're too mm. humble to say that. I will say that. No we all will say that. But, but I, I just, I don't know if my mind's the only person whose mind is blown right now, but I think so many times 
people think that, you know, well, you ate too much sugar, you have diabetes, or you, even you got a toxic exposure. But I love that you just gave us the knowledge base that, that there is a turning on of a genetic expression that allows that disease to actually manifest in your body. Yes. And what we see, because we do translational research, which then goes into the clinic setting, is you guys are testing and showing that we can actually turn that back off. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, and she exactly, says yes. exactly. Uh, this what is uh, done by, let's say, Doctor Violet Renesca, Doctor Irina Rosenfeld. Yes, uh, they change epigenetics. They uh, turn off uh, changes, turn off metabolic reactions that lead to disease, and they turn on uh, metabolic reactions and uh, proteins, everything that uh, leads to health. This is exactly epigenetics. This disease, it is multigenic. And yes, there is genetic component probably. Uh, and it is change. There are changes. We don't, by the way, we don't know yet what is this genetic component. And uh, sometimes it is frustrating, but uh, we cannot find it yet. Uh, I hope we will. I hope we will, but uh, not yet. It's, uh, so can you even, share even uh, even if there is this genetic component, but this component can be either overruled completely or at least partially to make this disease easier uh, to uh, mitigate if, if not to reverse it, but at least to mitigate symptoms to some degree. Great. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. I mean, by the way, that's incredible because I think so many times we, <laughs> so many times we go into a doctor's office and, or, or we are just struggling with symptoms and we don't always understand that there are things that can, can alter that. I mean, we, as an Institute, we're, we're very, um, integrative medicine, um, whole body mindset, right? We know that food and nutrition and environment and environmental exposures and thinking. And and thinking and the mind, yes, and the mind make a tremendous impact on the health. I had not made the connection to that. And I know that that's your area of specialty and research. Will you share with us, with the community, some of the research that's currently going on in chronic disease, chronic inflammation with epigenetics? Epigenetics, it is a lot of different uh, reactions. So, well, again, problem is research is very expensive. Yes. <laughs> and I can do only research for which I get funds. Yes. Uh, there is, uh, um, so for myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, we did some work in area of uh, methylation of DNA and area of some non-coding uh, RNAs. And we did see difference between patients and healthy controls. Uh, also, we could see uh, if blood was drawn from patients uh, after overnight fasting or after breakfast, it also could change what we see in blood. There is kind of sister, I would say sister disease, uh, which is uh, Gulf War illness. Yes. Uh, which is, uh, which can, has... Can you explain that disease to okay, me, to so, our community? In uh, 1990, 1991, first Gulf War, yes. uh, about 800 American troops were deployed to Kuwait. Yes. It was the very first Gulf War. And American soldiers did not have much of direct combat, but they were exposed to a lot, a lot of environmental hazards. Uh, was their, that like the their, uniform, their uniform was soaked in pesticides. Their camps were located above uh, underground storage of uh, radioactive materials. They were exposed to uh, low dosage of sarin. So it was a lot of uh, factors. Uh, and about between 25 to 30 percent of them came back ill. And symptoms of this illness are very similar very similar to symptoms of, let's say, myalgic encephalomyelitis, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, so I was getting funding uh, from uh, federal agencies on and off to do research in uh, EMECFS. And lately I have more funding to do research in Gulf War illness. 
So, so, th- so when you say similar, is is there a neuroinflammatory response? Yes. yes okay. And the yes. and the fatigue. Fatigue, uh, neuroinflammatory response, gastrointestinal issues, uh, cardiovascular issues. Symptoms are very similar. Okay. Clinical symptoms okay. are very very similar. I cannot say identical. I'm not medical doctor, <laughs> so I would not say identical. But I know that very very similar. Right. Uh, so I got funded to look at single cells, single immune cells in uh, Gulf War il- uh, illness patients. So this is an uh, area of research that is, uh, well, now it is cutting edge when we can uh, look at every single cell, uh, well, from blood, from lymphocytes, I can take uh, about 5,000 cells uh, which represent different uh, types of uh, lymphocytes, and look what happens in each of these cells. Uh, and uh, this gives a very good resolution of uh, events, what is happening with the immune system, uh, including uh, epigenetic changes. So the implication with patients, right? So we've got uh, individuals that are that are dealing with, with this from a patient perspective. We, at the Institute, we you know, one of our primary goals is to shorten the gap between yes. a concept of how we could possibly help somebody, scientific research of what could possibly help somebody, and implementing treatment with this. Yes. When you are are working like on a on a research project like that, is it in your mind always thinking about the 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 body of whose blood that came from? Like are are we thinking about how we can then create an intervention? So in the beginning, uh, I learned not to think about body because uh, when we're talking about research, it has to be technically valid yes. and clean. Yes. So when I have samples from control subjects and from patients, I don't want to know where it came from because I have to treat all these samples exactly the same right. way. I Getting rid of know. the emotional variable. Yes, yes We've absolutely. Got to get rid of the emotional uh, variable. Yes, I have okay. to focus exactly oh. the same way on each sample. Right. Only then uh, results will be valid. Right. Uh, and we need technically valid results. So uh, what happens uh, from pers- uh, patient perspective, it is at the later stages after we see uh, what is happening on molecular level and then we try to understand which metabolical pathways are changed. Then when we can think about patients. And so then we look at what type of healing or help protocols we can yes. implement. Yes. And is it is it a lot of like you even brought in the mind, right? Is it is there lifestyle modification that happens with lifestyle modification can change a lot. What about nutrition? Uh, I think nutrition is included in lifestyle. Yes, yes. lifestyle, including nutrition, wonderful, uh, can change a lot. And this is uh, those are these epigenetic changes. Yes. Uh, so let's say uh, work like this at single cell level. I can see that. Well, for example, uh, in, in our preliminary studies, we could see that uh, patients with uh, gul- gulf or illness have more monocytes than uh, healthy controls. And I can convey this uh, finding to doctors. I mean, not yet, it was just preliminary studies. Uh, Or let's say uh, preliminary studies that I tried to do in order to receive federal funding in future uh, involved uh, about the same type of experiments with EMECFS patients. And I could see that uh, these patients uh, that I had blood from, they have a lot of B cells, a lot. Uh, so from three to five times more than healthy controls. And I can tell about this to, or I can tell our doctors about this. Um, and, so, and something to be aware of or something yes. to look for. So yes. we talk a lot about, as an institute, about believing the patient. And we have, uh, and, and I talked to Dr. Arena today about that, about empathy for the patient and believing the patient. But I think there's the heart and the compassion and the passion that our practitioners have. 
But I really think it's grounded in such solid science that there's there's it's their belief or their hope for resolution or getting a patient better comes because we do this incredible research, right? We see it. It's it like you said. It's it's validated. Yes, uh, I would say because we try to work together. Yes. So so in your body of research, because I know that there's a lot of different. Um, Different essays. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Different we, experiments. Yes, yes, exactly. What 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 kind of stands out most in I'm gonna I'm gonna use the generic inflammatory response in the body. What is is it that it's connected to the immune system? Is it that, you know, we we we're hearing so much about inflammation and what happens in the body with inflammation. And and is there something that stands out to you? Is there is there any commonality that you're seeing in your research? All systems in our bodies are interconnected, I completely interconnected. So, um, okay, I'm working with lymphocytes because it's just easier to access lymphocytes. It is not as invasive as uh, access of uh, spinal fluid or anything else. Uh, but all systems are interconnected. If we change one system, if we change a little bit something in immune system, all other systems will be changed. That's profound. I mean, I, I think I'm hearing that in in our community, in our in our I and I am yes. community, is that everybody embraces that all systems yes. are interconnected. So and we have Dr. Patrick Berry yes. in the clinic, uh, who is a osteopathic physician who is doing osteopathic manipulations. So it was found that um, patients just with chro low, uh, chronic low back pain, okay, they undergo osteopathic manipulations, meaning osteopathic physicians move their muscles and bones in low back. Right. But cytokines in their plasma also are changed after that. Oh, wow. So, so moving bones and muscles actually can affect immune system. Absolutely. Uh, and feeling of pain, which and this feeling is in our brain. So all these systems are so interconnected. We cannot find one target and target something. By targeting one molecule, we will target everything in the body. And that's why I really like the way that they do blood tests and they try slowly, slowly, very, very gently, a little bit by, by a little bit, change diet, change supplements, but very, very carefully without this drastic... Uh, right, without disrupting. The yes. imbalance can be yes. can be disrupting. Yes. Disrupting the yeah. imbalance can inhibit finding balance. Let me say yes. that again. Disrupting <laughs> an imbalance yes. can, ha can be hard on the body to find a new balance exactly. or a healthier balance. So, so what we do at the Institute in a research perspective... What do you think sets us apart? I've, I've heard people talk about um, our ability to do things quickly, you know, to do things effectively. What do you feel like sets INIM's research program apart? I think some of our clinicians that keep on open mind and constantly studying. Okay. Is it that we're bringing the patient to the the... The issue is becoming more defined, and so that defines the research. Or is the research defining what we look for in the patient? We I know they work ideas. together. Exchange ideas. So it's yes. the collaboration. Yes, it's the collaboration. Yes, that's it is wonderful. Absolute collaboration. Yes, and uh, uh, people like them, yeah. and uh, some other people that try to work. Uh, so there are some people in the lab, like Dr. Durasami who is doing a lot of work in the lab and trying to get all these tests valid right. and uh, valid results. Yes, uh, trustable results. So this, what so, makes... Yeah. So, so if I were to fast forward 10 years from now and I were to say, you know, what... And, and dream big. We have, I always say, as, as if we got every grant and we got every donation that we desperately need, right? And we had the freedom to work as quickly as we could towards finding help and solutions for patients dealing with chronic fatigue, chronic illness, Gulf War injury. 
10 years from now, what do you think is going to be cutting edge medicine from an epigenetics perspective? What do you, what do you, what, what's the dream out there? I would love, I would love to be able for every patient to do this single cell research and to look at uh, the level of single cells at each patient and to see what is wrong with which types of cells. Uh, And then uh, hopefully we'll have more knowledge uh, about connection of nutrition and lifestyle with these metabolic changes. Uh, well, I have to ask you another question. Yes, so yes. how much money? You have, I un- have unlimited <laughs> funds, unlimited funds, unlimited resources, unlimited funds. Yes. So, for- so then I think uh, research at single cell level for each patient. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, problem is we don't, even now, we don't quite know what is norm. Wow. That's a very valid point. So, <laughs> yes. so, so we so don't have a clear is, definition of health. Do you um, think? Like, like we have I, very, uh, we have uh, we almost, very relative, very wow. relative definition of what is health. Uh, okay, and here is something that I believe. Okay, uh, let's say cholesterol values for yes. different people, and I know that norm of cholesterol is two hundred is. Yeah, top. top. You want to be under two hundred? Yes. They tell you. Yeah. Yes. But yes, but I think that because bodies are different. Yes. So for each person, this norm should be different. Yes. It is my vision, and again, I'm not medical doctor, but it is. Kind but of all what of I our believe. medicine comes out of research scientists. Just so we are clear, we we practice medicine based on your research uh. and the findings of research. I mean, there is there is some trial and error for sure. But we, we, we define our protocols based on what research says, whether it's a drug or an intervention or a nutraceutical, right? All of our, all of our sound big breakthroughs in medicine are through research. So I, I love that perspective. That perspective is so valuable because you come at it from a completely different aspect, for so sure. So probably, probably it would be better to uh, look at cells of the same person when right. person feels better. Right. And then when person feels worse, and uh, probably this worse, try to move to better. Yeah. And yes, also taking, each person. taking an indicator, or, uh, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's not just the blood chemistry, it's how we feel, how mobile exactly, are we, yes, how is yes. our cogni- cognitive function, um, you know, how much joy are we experiencing, yes. right? And then if we could, oh, if we could take the cell at, at, you know, peak level, our oxytocin's through the roof, and then we could take the cell when we feel worse and, and reverse engineer that. I love that aspect of medicine. That sounds fascinating to me. Maybe not... Uh in the highest state, but just normal. Oh, I want to be 110% all the time. <laughs> peak normal, performance, peak performance. Quiet, calm. <laughs> yes, when it is comfortable, just in ho- like a nice, ho- healthy homeostasis. Shoot. Yes. But that's a really good point. I never, I, I genuinely never really thought about that is, is what is normal. And, and when you bring the cholesterol issue up, I mean, we see women that are going through menopause that have a natural spike in cholesterol as the body's starting to change from the E1, E2 conversion. And, and it could be absolutely normal. It, absolutely I, I, from normal. My, from right, my right, 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 right. Oh, and again, I'm not medical you doctor. I understand, yeah, but <laughs> yes. it's an interesting observation. And, and an interesting observation, too, when we see people that have, you know, been on statin drugs and they still get tons of blockage. You know, why is their body that way and another body the different way? And looking okay, at that customization. I think, I think that disclaimer is in order that it is just talking. It is not, not even advice to no, do no, anything. Of course like this. not. No, it's, no, this is what no. science is, is it's the freedom to ponder, right? And to wonder. And that's where the best medical breakthroughs come through. And I, I, and I will share that I, on the outside or, or not being, you know, a, a clinician and not being in the research space right now at the Institute, what I get to observe is how much um, latitude is given for people to, to think and to ponder and to wonder about things like this. And, and you've given me a lot to, to wonder about. I, I have a, a question, one last question. Sure. I would like to have an entire podcast on epigenetics. Are you? Would you come back and do that with me? 
We can do it. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. I, I cannot thank you enough. This has been such an incredible experience. Our, our goal is to find first to give hope to individuals. And I think with us constantly holding out that we believe you, we believe in you, we believe in your body's ability to heal. We understand through research yes. that you can move towards wellness, um, that that's important for everybody out there to know that. Well, they get patients that are housebound, almost housebound. Right. And in uh, if these patients follow their recommendations, so majority of these patients in a year or year and a half go back to work and even have babies. So yes, it's, it's it amazing. is all changing yes. epigenetics. Yes, isn't that incredible? Well, th well, that's well. Thank you so much. And I know with complex diseases and you know chronic fatigue, Emmy, uh, CFS. I always get that backwards. Chronic CFS. fatigue syndrome. Yes, okay. um, Gulf War in illness. All of these neuroinflammatory disorders. I know that we're working very diligently in research. And so my goal is that as we do this, we create the reality that we don't have barriers to do unlimited research so that the vision of customized care and, uh, you know, turning off those switches that are causing the manifestation of negative disease is available to incredible researchers like you. So thank you so much for coming. I thank really you. appreciate it. I'm inspired and excited. And I've got you for another podcast, right? Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you.